Hey guys, welcome to Breaking Bread. And on today's show, we're gonna be around St. Mark's Church in Sheepshead Bay. Now, I can already tell that there are a lot of good places to eat around here, so stay with us. On this episode of Breaking Bread, we'll be around St. Mark's Church in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Now, of course, Sheepshead Bay is known for its great water views, but there are a lot of great restaurants on the bay, too, so it's going to be a little difficult to choose. But luckily, Monsignor Jamie will be meeting me later on in the show to help me find our picks. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. <laughs> Okay guys, we're at our first stop of the day, which is right across the street from the water. So what better place to start than a clam bar? Now this place is a Monsignor Jamie pick and you always know those are good. So let's go check it out. Okay guys, so I'm in the kitchen of Randazzo's and I didn't waste any time because this place is world famous and I wanted to get straight to business. And I got Pauly Randazzo himself here with me and you're gonna make me a... Combo. What's in the combo? Galamaz, scongeli, shrimp, and mussels. I love all that. With our famous the hot or medium. Right, there's a big story about that sauce. You're gonna tell oh, me yes, later, right? later on. Let's get started. You got it, baby. I take the dish down for the galama, shrimp, school jelly, and the mussels. Now what's that bread? This is a biscuit. Biscuit. It's hot, I make it soft. So I there's the, the school jelly, and the school jelly and the mussels are steamed. I can and... make everything steamed, but I'm making a fried shrimp and fried galama. Yeah, we'll mix it up a little bit, a little healthy, yeah. a little treat. It's all healthy, it's all good. <laughs> ah, so you open them up so I can get all that delicious sauce right yeah. in, the, in the shell there. And everything is really fresh, fresh seafood, fresh everything, right? Live, baby, live. Live? Did you just pull it out of the bay? Not the bay, <laughs> not Sheepshead Bay. Why is it called Sheepshead Bay? I don't know, tell me. <laughs> I uh, hear you burn. I know I why. I think you know, I don't I know. I know why. <laughs> so tell me. The Sheepshead Fish. Sheepshead Fish? It was fish. loaded In years the bay. ago. In the bay, yeah. Oh, so what happened to them? We don't they, know. They uh, disappeared, fished they disappear. out. This is the mussels I put in here. Perfect. And I sprinkle a little scongeli. Then I come over here, shake and bake some galama. Fresh, everybody. The fisherman's pride galama. And the shrimp, I'm gonna douse in the fry. And put it right in the fryer. And when it comes out, it'll be ready to I'm go. I'm gonna give you a combo. Okay, so now our calamar and our shrimp calamar are ready. Calamar just came up. Looking crispy, golden brown. Yes, right on top of the dish. I have to be honest with you, I'm really excited to try this world-famous seafood of yours. <laughs> you people say people get off the plane and they go to the Statue of Liberty, then they come here to Randazzo's, right? Whatever, right? Man, man, the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> <laughs> After they come the plane, here they come right here. Yeah, okay. They Statue miss Liberty? home and they miss my okay, galamar. This is the medium sauce. Perfect. Which I'm gonna mix. So you're gonna give me a little bit of the medium and a little bit of the hot, because you have both here. Yes, just the hot sauce. Gotta be spread properly, not too much. Perfect. That looks great. That's what made us famous. So I'm gonna try this, and I'm gonna tell you guys, you know, it smells good, let's see if it tastes good. You got it, baby. Okay, so Polly, I'm gonna get straight to business. Yeah. I'm going right for the sauce. I wanna sauce. just try too. Get this calamar, see what's all that. That's the calamar, that's the uh, tentacles. Okay. Tender? Yeah but still crispy. Yeah, of course. Perfectly seasoned. How's the sauce? The sauce is incredible. Incredible. That's what they come here for. Try a mussel. I love mussels. I mm, like them too, they mm, cleanse mm, the mm, arteries. Mm, mm, mm. They do? Yes, yeah, they I didn't do. know that. Yeah. That calamar just literally melted in my mouth. I know what that really means now. There's a story behind this sauce. You gotta tell me what the story is. It started with my great-grandmother. She came up with like a tomato sauce rich that can hold up to a seafood. Mm. When the seafood doesn't get 
underpowered by the sauce. Now, I just want to let everybody know how long ago this was. This was like in the 1930s, right? Well, 1930s, we were strictly fish. Okay. So you, you guys were in business before that, your family? Oh, my gosh. 1912, 1916. Don't so forget, my family's here a long time. I was going to say, you got almost 100 years in Sheep's Head Bay. My family's here almost 100 years, yes. So that's why your restaurant is so famous. Well, we're consistent. You okay. come to Rendazzo's, you're going to get the same thing you got last week, last month, last year. It's not going to change. The price might change. Might price get changes lower. on everything, right. Might get lower. That's a nice surprise. I might have a sale, you never know. <laughs> when you're in Sheep's Head Bay, this needs to be stop number one on your list, Rendazzo's. Without a doubt. <laughs> I, mean, I have to agree with her. <laughs> Okay, guys, that was a great start to this episode. But when we come back from this break, we're going to show you some more amazing places to eat in Sheep's Head Bay. Stay with us. Okay, guys, so you can get just about any type of food that you can think of in Sheep's Head Bay. So we thought we'd make it a little interesting and mix it up and try a Turkish restaurant. So let's go inside and check them out. Okay, guys, we're inside Istanbul restaurant and I'm here with the owner, Hijri, and he's got this beautiful spread here of cold appetizers. Now, of course, they have hot appetizers, but my favorite are the cold, so that's what he set out for me. And these beautiful colors and smells that I have going on match your restaurant. This place is beautiful. I feel like I'm on the Mediterranean. Thank you. It's really lovely. You got like Turkish artifacts and stuff all yeah, over we'll the place. We try to bring the Turkish ambience from Istanbul to Brooklyn. Istanbul and Brooklyn, what can I say? Right, you, so you, you don't have to travel all the way back to the <laughs> Turkey to be in Istanbul. You can just travel to Sheep's Head Bay. Sheep's Head Bay <laughs> to see Istanbul. Of course, here in our appetizers, we've got the classic Mediterranean. Like, we've got the hummus and the baba ganoush and the eggplant. But you've got some things that are specifically Turkish, which are these two. Tell me about those. Sure. This is what uh, we call haydari. Haydari. Uh, that made out of lebni, sour cream, and uh, walnut, and some dill in there. Okay. And uh, we just mix them and they're ready to serve. And you just eat uh, it straight, just like sure. that? Sure. And okay. uh, you want to test some of this? Sure. Sure, I'll love give to. You. I already started on the cucumber and tomato salad. Sure, that's I a love shepherd, this. shepherd salad. It's, it's known as a Turkish salad. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you find this one at every Turkish restaurant. It's very good. Right. That's uh, mm. one of the, the famous Turkish salad. Mm. Light, salad fresh, here. delicious. And we also have in here, uh, we call mm -hmm. ezme, spicy ezme. Ezme. Right, and we chop this with the, like a half moon knife. And kind of do this thing? Like, we chop it and then uh, we put some herbs, like uh, like Turkish red pepper. I like spicy. Uh, and I must say, I, the, the lemon is so fresh in the shepherd salad. Now these are delicious light appetizers, but we're gonna go in the kitchen and make some classic Turkish dishes, right? What are we making today? Uh, we're making a trout casserole today. We also make a Mediterranean sea bass. Okay. We import it from Mediterranean, from Turkey. Wow. And uh, we prepare a shish kebab. It's a most known uh, Turkish dish. Most known Turkish dish. Everybody right. knows shish kebab. Shish kebab, right. right. It's like a common... Like a hamburger, right? Right. Perfect. <laughs> so I'll try not to eat too much but I'll work on this a little more and then we're gonna head to the kitchen and cook. Okay, so now you guys are gonna make us some classic Turkish fish, right? Yes. And the first one is? Mediterranean sea, sea bass. We import that from our Turkey. Okay, and we're grilling that. Okay, and this is? And that's a trout. We're gonna make uh, with that a uh, trout casserole. Trout casserole, yes. okay. Yes, as you see, we put in a Wow, so we've got the vegetables on top that's, of that. That's the pre prepared vegetables. We have uh, tomatoes, pe red pepper, wow. green pepper, and. Uh, Is there mushrooms in there? Mushrooms in there. So right. you stuff the fish with it. Roll around. And you put it all around the fish. What else goes on top of that? Okay, now we add our cheese. What uh, kind of cheese? That's a uh, mozzarella cheese. Alrighty. We, we call kashkawal cheese in Turkish, but it's kashkawal. also called mozzarella cheese in here. Okay. Uh, now we're gonna put that in our own. And then you bake that? Yeah, bake. Oh, I see. So they get the cheese all over the fish and the juices from exactly. the... Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. And in the meantime, our sea bass is going to continue to grill. Exactly. And what do we serve that with? 
Uh, we serve that with a, a green salad. Okay, so we're gonna get okay. that in the in the oven first. Exactly. Okay. Great, and it smells wonderful. I could smell the peppers and the onions and the tomato and the fish. It smells really good. The next, I think our grilled fish is ready too. Nice. Oh, this is the garlic sauce you were telling That's me about, right. right? That's right. So what's in that? What's in that marinade in that sauce there? That uh, there is an olive oil in there mm -hmm. and uh, garlic, some herbs. So. And, uh, we blend in uh, blenders, and then uh, just after the grill is ready. You just pour it on the fish? Because I noticed fish. that we didn't season the fish before we put it on the grill. Right. It was just clean and cut up grilled, and this is what so gives what it all it is, the flavor. Like, when you season after the grill, you can get that smell. And, I got it. You, you know, get the taste of, tasty, of everything, right. herbs and everything, because right. it kind of burns off when you cook it exactly. otherwise. That's Perfect. Cool. All right, well, ev everything looks absolutely beautiful. We've got all kind of great colors and smells going on here. so. Time to eat it and tell you how it is. Okay, everything looks so beautiful and it smells incredible. So of course now we have to taste it and tell everybody how it is. Sure. Now I picked the fish casserole because I've never had anything like this before. So what are we waiting for? Is the cheese, is it actual just mozzarella or is it from Turkey? It's a, uh, we call Turkish kashkawal cheese, we call, it's uh, like, it's like a mozzarella cheese. You know, you can use a mozzarella cheese on top of that too. Same thing. You know, same thing, it's not much different. Right? Mm. It's not that much different. It, mm -hmm. I think it's a little lighter though. Yeah, a probably. A little bit. Yeah. Mm. So we're gonna keep enjoying our classic Turkish dishes. And remember, when you guys are in Sheep's Head Bay, you gotta come and check this place out. Everything is delicious. Next stop on our little Sheep's Head Bay tour is the New York Steakhouse. And you know I love steak, so let's get in there. Okay guys, here I am in the New York Steakhouse and I'm with one of the partners, Ed. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, thank you so much for having us. Your place is beautiful. It would be our pleasure. Thank you. So, tell me how long you guys have been in Sheepshead Bay. We've been about three and a half years. Really? Yeah. So why a steakhouse in this area? Uh, when we first wanted to open up a restaurant, we figured that uh, there's no good steakhouse in the South Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And we actually the only one in South Brooklyn right now. Really? Yeah, I, I, I felt that. I'm like, I don't feel like I see a lot of steakhouses in no. this neighborhood. So we're glad to be here. And your appetizers look beautiful. What do we thank have? Thank you, thank you. Well, you have eel avocado right here. Okay. And you have nice fresh avocado with eel, uh, some wasabi dressing, uh, ginger, and rice noodles. Wow, and this is? And this is tuna tartare. And we make our tuna tartare from fresh, uh, sushi style uh, tuna and it's wow. made in chunks rather than mold over uh -huh. and uh, served with a little bit of lime and some wasabi. Okay, well let me, let me try this eel because I love eel. Please do. With the avocado because it's eel avocado, right? That's correct. Like it. I love the marrying of the flavors of the eel with the avocado. It's very good because usually when I have eel, I just have eel. Right. I don't have anything else with it. That is a good flavor combination. You get the creamy smoothness of the avocado. With, and what is this dressing on here? Uh, it's a little bit of uh, our own dressing and we have a little bit of uh, some <laughs> I mean, secrets, I would gonna... say. <laughs> <laughs> no description of the dressing. Some, some secrets, <laughs> uh, but, but it is based on soy. Okay, well whatever it is, it is delicious. The combination of the avocado with that dressing, that's not soy sauce or anything. That's unlike anything I've ever tasted before. So tell me what I'm gonna cook with Paul, one of your chefs today. Uh, with Paul, you're gonna cook Water House, which okay. is one of our famous dishes. All right, sounds good. So I'm gonna get into the kitchen. Thank well, don't rush. You know, why don't you enjoy the meal and uh, and then you can go into the kitchen and cook. Okay, if you insist, you know, I do need my strength once I get in the kitchen. I mean, I didn't even try the tuna tartare, so. Please. I do, thank you so much. Ooh, this looks good. Mm. 
Okay, guys, in the kitchen with Chef Paul, one of the chefs here at the New York Steakhouse. And what do you make at a steakhouse except steak, of course? And this is a porterhouse, right? Yeah, that's a porterhouse. All well, right. Well, basically, this is a beautiful cut of meat. It's from our short line. It's like a porterhouse for two person. I hope so. Uh, this yeah, is huge. How, yeah. much is, how much meat is right here? Well, actually, this is three pounds. This is like 36 um, ounces. Wow. Beautiful. Okay. So our first step towards this beautiful piece of meat, all we had to eat is just salt and pepper. We right. have nothing more to eat. So now, is this considered a fatty piece of meat? Because I see a little bit of marbleizing in there, but not too much. That little piece of fat that you see, by the time we put on the grill, that little fat there will base, yeah, will base it, and by the time we're ready to serve it, will be so beautiful. So, but you guys also trim a little bit, I can see. Yeah, you keep we, it nice yeah, and lean. we trim the extra fat, and what we do with the extra fat, we don't put it in the garbage. We just put it in the oven, uh -huh. reduce, take that fat from there, and then we use about the same fat to base the meat when we cook. Nice. So we get that. Nice so you still get that nice meaty taste in it because you're basting it with its own fat. Exactly. Perfect. So what's step one? Salt and pepper, you said? Yes. Let's do As it. As you can see, you know, I put salt. This is natural um, kosher salt. The, the trick in this now, you don't want to put the pepper because when you put it on the grill, it's black. It's going to burn. Oh, so we take our steak look. and we put right here like this. All right. And this steak is going to sit there now for like two, three minutes on this side. So we're gonna put it on the grill and he's gonna make those perfect little diamond grill marks on the steak. Beautiful presentation. That always looks good on a cut of steak. Never fails. So what you, you only grill it on each side for about two minutes because you just want the look. Yeah, that's. But when you cook it, cook it, you put it in, in the, the oven. Because right, if you look, it's like three, yeah, it's three inches too thick. Got it. So you'll never get a perfect cook on the, on on the grill. grill, yeah. Okay. So this is where I turn now and you see our beautiful diamonds there. Now I had the black pepper. Now you put the black, black pepper, pepper on the side that's already cooked first. That. Got it. We turn. Okay. So I take from the grill. I add some more black pepper. On the and other I, side yeah. that wasn't cooked. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and then I bring right down here to the salamander grill right here. So here we grill for like a minute and a half on each side. Now to cut our porterhouse. And then you're gonna slice yeah. it up, right? And then I'm gonna slice. So there's this a lot of different steps in the cooking. First yeah, the grill, see, then, then the, the salmon, salmon the right. grill, then the salt, and you can't forget your salt and your pepper. This is very important. So you gotta feel for the bone, mm -hmm. then you gotta yeah. put the bone, the knife where, right exactly where the bone is. Then you go up like this, uh -huh. and this is our beautiful cut of meat. Then when you remove the meat from the bone, you gotta go right in there, and get that meat out. No, we're not gonna discard anything here. No, the bone which is here, I'm gonna place right here. I and see. as you say, you like your, your meat medium. Medium, medium. Okay. So now I slice. Because as you can see, it's a very thick piece of meat. Very thick. So That's gotta be a good three inches at least. Yeah, it's like perfect three inches. Do you guys cut, do the cut yourself here? Yeah, we do our own cutting. That's why we can retain our own fat and use for Got our it. flavor. This is our next side. Nice thin slices, not too thin, and not too thick. thick. No, this is our beautiful porterhouse. We trim, and instead of we discard the extra fat, this is where we store it. We store it right here. So we take a little bit, and we just base mm -hmm. the meat beautifully like mm -hmm. that. And Keep what happened beefy here, flavor. That, that real profound flavor. So what we do now, we just return this to the oven, right here. This time it's in a convection oven, right? Yeah, a that's different. a convection oven. Right. And we, we let that cook for like 10, 15 minutes, and then boom, we're ready. Ready to go? We're ready okay, to go. Sounds that's good. it. Okay, so our steak is ready now, yeah, right? Our steak is now ready to go. And meanwhile, we were on the break. We were plating um, our, our side. This is our cream spinach. This is our mashed potato. This is the mushroom. This is mm, very good. Those smell so oh, good, good, you guys. I can't tell you. Now I go in the convection oven and I pull my steak out. And this is beautiful medium. Perfect. Now I pull my plate from here. And this is so easy. I just go like this. This steak smells so good, and it's perfectly medium. Mm. And there's our porterhouse. Perfect. Beautiful again. 
perfect. So, so when you guys come here, you gotta try. Try yeah. our porthouse and our mushroom is a favorite. Yeah. It's a killer. So, you know, listen, we believe you and everything, but I think I need to go out there and taste it. it. I put you to work, now I'm gonna go get to work and eat this. Okay, be my guest. <laughs> Thank okay, you, Paul. You're welcome. Okay, guys, so this is the spread here. And before I even start eating, I can definitely tell you that this food qualifies as deliciousness just based off the aroma. So I already kind of got started. You know, I'm a meat and potatoes girl, so I got into the mashed potatoes, pulled out a piece of steak. And let's see. It's deliciousness. This is so good. And the steak is perfectly tender, perfectly medium, and those are some smooth mashed potatoes. Now, believe it or not, you can taste all that in just one bite. But we're gonna take a little break right now. When we come back, there's still a lot more to see in Sheepshead Bay, so stay with us. Hey guys, welcome back to Breaking Bread. So I'm here at the rectory at St. Mark's to meet Monsignor Jamie, and hopefully while I'm in there, I'll get to say hi to Father Grimaldi. Come on, let's go. So Monsignor Jamie, it just so happened that you guys had a meeting here today? Yes, oh. we had a meeting this morning with Father Grimaldi about the annual Catholic Appeal. Okay, what is that exactly? Well, the annual Catholic Appeal is the major fundraiser for the uh, ministries that the diocese provides for all of the parishes throughout the uh, diocese, and each parish uh, is assessed a certain goal okay. and uh, to raise for the diocese, for the programs, and anything over the goal goes back to the parish. So it's kind of like a win-win situation for everyone. That is a win-win situation. How's it going? <laughs> That's great. Well, welcome. Thank um, you. <laughs> working with Monsignor has been great. We, uh, as Monsignor said, we work together on the Catholic Appeal. Um, I'm the chair of the Pastors Advisory Committee. That's a committee of priests that kind of a, a give the bishop some advice as mm -hmm. regards to campaign. And we had a, we just uh, had a meeting and we ended a great, great year. We reached our goal and it was really very successful. So it was great. That's great. great. Yeah. That's so I'm glad I, it We're hoping, and we know, I'm not saying we're hoping, we know it'll be another success this year. Well, sure welcome right. you to St. Mark. I think it's your first Thank visit. It is, Father mm -hmm. Grimaldi. Thank you I for having me. I know Monsignor's having. been here before. Yes. And uh, I was here a number of times, and uh, when you came here, you renovated the church, and it's magnificent. Thank you, yeah. Uh, one of the most great. beautiful churches in the diocese. Really? Yeah, really? A lot of great parishioners here. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. It's so tell community. me about the community. It's, it's an awesome community. It's a great mix of, of a lot of different nationalities and mm -hmm. people, um, but the Catholic community is definitely very vibrant and alive. Um, as you might know, we have a great little fishing village down on Emmons. Yes. I think it's one of the largest non-commercial fishing fleets in, in the New York area. Mm -hmm. Every day boats go out, you know, those guys who go out and cast their, yeah. their, uh, their rods and their nets out into the ocean there and come back with some nice, nice fish. Well, we're still going to check out some more amazing places around your parish. I hope we'll give you some ideas for you and for your parishioners. Always looking for some new recommendations. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple more things up my sleeve that I'm gonna share with Monsignor. Great. And I'm sure he'll come back and tell you at your next you meeting. You better. Maybe I'll bring a little dish. <laughs> <Yeah. Okay. laughs> This is the place I was telling you about. Now, Brand new, right? Yeah. Now, we've been to all of the Sheep's Head Bay must visits, but this place is supposed to be really good. Let's try it. Yeah, let's <laughs> get in there. And we're gonna have something very unique. Okay. Okay guys, Monsignor Jamie and I came straight to the kitchen at the Royal Bay and we are making a breaking bread first, frog legs. And we're with executive chef Jean-Luc and he's gonna show us how it's done. Let's see. Okay, we take the legs, we cut them in half and take feet out. Like this, top of the moisture on them. Uh, today we prepare with uh, garlic. Garlic. Uh, garlic butter with garlic butter. some Who parsley. Like garlic so you dredge them in flour? Yes. And then we're going to saute them? And uh, yes, we're going to saute them very fast. Now, do frog take, take a, do they take a long time to cook? No, they, they, they take a very short time, but they have to be cooked uh, on a high heat. A few of them at a time. Okay. Okay. Now, Monsignor, have you ever made frog legs before? No, I have never made them. So <laughs> I, use, I use some clarified butter. The clarified butter is butter that's been boiled down for all the moisture to leave it, right? Yes, and the, the buttermilk is on the stay on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you take scoop it off the top. We 
yes. Now this dish is normally served as a appetizer. It can be served as appetizer or entree. There we go. So when you put the frog legs, you don't touch, don't move them too much. Just mm. Let them stay cook. in the same spot on to, the pan. Yes. Okay, some salt, some pepper. White pepper. This is golden brown. Mm. We're getting golden brown on each side. Whoa. They almost look like chicken wings. Yeah, I was thinking the same <laughs> yeah. exact thing. And I add some garlic butter. Garlic butter. That's garlic Everything butter with good. parsley and all that. Ooh, it smells amazing. Smell that garlic. It smells so good. This is done. I see you have a little puff pastry as a garnish. Yes. So then you dip the uh, you, you, puff pastry yes. you, right into the sauce. I mean, you can you you eat the, the frog legs with the wow. the puff pastry. Well, like Jean Luc said, voila! Now Monsignor and I are going to go try them and tell you what we think. Well, Tati, let's go hop into the dining room. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Monsignor, I have to be honest with you. When I first heard we were making frog legs, I imagined this long and elaborate process to make them. I had no idea. Not it was this quick and easy. We dredged it, as you saw, a little flour and sauteed okay. it, a little butter, uh, uh, flavored garlic butter, and that's yeah, it. One, that's two, three. It. I'm so shocked. <laughs> well, Shall we try? You, yeah, you know, I'm tempted to like pick it up and just <laughs> eat well, it. Well, I like mean, a... it is a, a finger food. I mean, is uh, that appropriate? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm gonna put a little uh, drawn butter on mine. All right. I know you're watching your calories. So. You know it. <laughs> the way I've been eating today, I'm just gonna go ahead and just taste this. Hmm. What do you think? This is good. Mm. Tastes a little bit like chicken. It's very tender. Mm hmm. Crunchy, the outside crunchy is crunchy. Because of the flour. And that parsley in that mm. garlic butter is so tasty. Mm. What is this? You were in the kitchen with Jean-Luc while I was on the phone with my mom, of course. We made a little seared tuna. Mm -hmm. And we seared it with some sesame seed and oil. And wow. then uh, served here with some seaweed and some ginger. And he made a little uh, mirin wine dressing. It's um, oh, wasabi, yeah. soy sauce, honey. Mm -hmm and uh, the, the sweet wine. And uh, you put a little bit right on your tuna. Yeah, thank you. A little that. frise salad going on. I love tuna, seared tuna. What do you think? I love it. I love the crunchiness of the sesame seeds on top of the tuna. Mm. That's good. Well, you know, Monsignor Jamie, I had a really good time in Cheapside Bay. I did too. Yeah, I'm glad we got to go see Father Grimaldi. I'm so glad we met up and uh, you took me here. Yeah, good thing you had a meeting over there today. <laughs> Fits in a little fun with the work. But you guys have to come and check out all of these places for yourselves. Come here and try these frog legs. They're delicious. And the tuna, out of this world. So I'm Tati. And I'm Monsignor Jamie. See you next time on Breaking, Breaking Bread. Bread.